Hey Number Crunchers, good to be back with you. And in this lesson I want to go over the MATLAB command fmin search using two variables. Now I've done a previous video on fmin search using one variable and there's a little bit of syntax that's different. So it, I think it's worth a second video. Now fmin search is the simplest of the optimization routines that are built into the MATLAB optimization toolbox. And we're going to apply it to a function of two variables. That's this one. I put this up here before I started shooting so you didn't have to watch me write it all down. Um, this may be familiar to if you've seen some of the other uh, uh, videos I've done. This is the two variable lifeguard problem. If you want, you can go back and look and see where this came from. If this is new to you, don't worry about it. It's just an objective function. Now remember, the objective function is the thing we're trying to minimize in optimization routines always minimize. If you want to maximize something, you just minimize the negative of that something. So this is the objective function. The design variables are the function, the variables that make up the function. So I have two of them, x1 and x2. You call them x and y if you want. And we're going to write these down uh, in MATLAB. We're going to have to do it using you know, two different approaches. Now, just so you know what this looks like, the plot we're going to make, let's, let's imagine space here where that distance is x1 and that's x2 and then out of the board is x3. Now I don't know about you, I live in three space. I don't know how to envision more than three dimensions. I just can't do it. Uh, if you can, good for you, but you're, you're in pretty rare company if you can. The way we uh, visualize that third dimension is as a contour plus. We have contours that are even or equal uh, heights. They're, they, they join a curve or of equal heights above the xy plane. And for this problem, it's roughly, I can't quite draw it, but it's, it's kind of like that, okay? And the minimum value is going to appear at x1 star and x2 star, right? So what we're going to do in fmin search is we're going to type this in, okay? and we're going to make this plot, and then we're going to use fmin search to find that point right there. Now the problem we're going to have here in a minute is that MATLAB requires two different syntaxes for this and then for fmin search. So we're going to have to slightly modify the function to get it to do both. So uh, this fmin search works with any number of variables. It works on unconstrained optimization problems. So there's no constraints. You can, you can uh, use a pseudo-objective function if you want to include some constraints using this. And it's awfully handy because it doesn't require gradients. You don't have to have derivatives of this. The downside is it's going to be a little slower, a little less efficient. The upside is it's a lot easier to use. If you have a problem for which you're not CPU bound, for which number crunching time, it's the time you're making the CPU work on a, on a processor, isn't a problem. It runs fast enough that you don't care. This is a very good choice. It's easy to use. It's the, the simplest one in the optimization toolbox. So with that, let's go to MATLAB. Okay, so here we are in MATLAB, and we're going to use fmin search to solve the two variable lifeguard problem. What I'm going to do first is call up uh, the definition of the, the objective function that I typed in before while I was practicing for this little screencast. And you can kind of see it right down there in command history. So I'm going to pull that back up. It starts with f equals, so I'm just going to hit the up arrow and recall the last time I uh, typed in a command that started with f equals. And there it is. So that little ampersand defines something called an anonymous function. If you haven't run across this before, MATLAB usually was designed to think in terms of lists of numbers and blocks of numbers, which is vectors and matrices. But it's much expanded since the old days. And one of the things you can do is define a function that doesn't have lists of numbers associated with it yet. And so you can see there's nothing in the workspace. Here's my function. And there's the ampersand right there. So there we go. So I can now evaluate this just by putting numbers in it. I don't know what 120 means. Wouldn't be a very good choice for your lifeguard, but it's a legitimate uh, it's legitimate mathematically. So there, it just evaluated the function for me. And there's still no list of numbers over here. Okay, so we've got that. Now I want to plot this. There's a command called easy contour. Now I'm trying to plot a function, not a list of numbers. So I've got to use a command in MATLAB that will let me do this. Now in 
This version of MATLAB, R2015A, it still uses something called easy, well, this command, easy contour. And I think more recent versions are using a replacement command called F contour. This version doesn't seem to have it, but it's about three years old now. So if you uh, run easy contour, you may get a warning sign saying, don't use this. It's preferred to use F contour. If that happens, don't worry about it. Just change the easy to an F and you should be okay. Okay, I got some, there's my picture, there's my, my contour plot. Now, what's all this orange stuff over here? All this orange uh, warnings? Warnings are in orange. That means it wants to tell you something, but your command still ran. So I've still got my answer. What it's telling me is I didn't vectorize the input. If I wanted to be a little more efficient, I could put dots in front of the up arrows right there, right there, and right there. That vectorizes the code. It, it uh, uh, makes it run better when you push lists of numbers through it. And in order to make the contour plot, it had to push lists of numbers through my function. So it was objecting, but it still ran. All this really means is I used a couple extra uh, CPU clock cycles. Well, it hardly matters. So I made the contour plot. But here's a problem. I'm going to clear the screen to keep it from getting too busy here. Okay, pull that up. This is the fmin search in its simplest form, simplest implementation. There's my function f, and I have to give it a starting point. Well, if I had a really good starting point, I wouldn't need to use fmin search. I'd already know where the minimum was. So I'm just going to use 00. zero. That's, that's where the, the lifeguard is when uh, she starts to running for the uh, swimmer in distress. Mathematically speaking, it just says that I don't know where in design space to look. I'm just going to pick some point and tell it to start there. It tanked. It didn't work. Ugh. All right. There's two reasons. First is that it really wants me to use the vectorized notation. So I'm going to do that. There it is. I've fixed that part. Now let's type in fmin search again. It still doesn't work. Not enough arguments. Well, what the heck does that mean? Well, this is a problem that uh, in MATLAB syntax, there's actually two ways to describe multiple arguments to a function like this. One is to call out the variables one at a time, x1 and x2. And that's how uh, Easy Contour wants to use it. Here's the other one. Not there, not there, there. Here's the other way to do it. X is now a vector of variables. So instead of x and y, I have x sub 1 and over here x sub 2. There's x sub 2 there as well. This is mathematically equivalent to what I just typed in, but has a different syntax. Now it'll run. fmin search requires this syntax. And there's the answer. So this is one of those little quirks of MATLAB. Easy contour and fmin search actually require two different syntaxes. But if you're willing to uh, make that small change, you can draw a picture of your, of your design space and easily find the solution. So there you are. Hope it helps. We'll talk to you next time.